Portis and the Cat Eyes. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Julie Mann and I show men and women how they can create healthy, happy, sustainable lives. And I'm really excited because today I'm joined by Elisa Clickinger. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. It's so great to see you. So for those of you that don't yet know who Elisa is, she's a coach, an event producer, she's an author and owner of Women's Motorcycle Tours. How exciting is that? Anyway, before we get into that, Elisa, I'd love to know a bit about your background. How was life for you growing up? Growing up? I, uh, I had an interesting childhood because I moved, I, I was born in Florida and lived there till I was 13. And then my parents bought a bed and breakfast in New Hampshire. So we went from one very distinct section of the USA to another um, region. And uh, it was suddenly life was exposed. We were a family living in a functioning business and so we had in guests coming in all the time and uh, meeting new people and I really credit that to my absolute wanderlust that I have now <laughs> in my life and my joy of, of people I've met so many so many neat people and have a lot of really great stories from uh from the travelers that came through fantastic so up until you started your motorcycle business what had you done for a career I was director of operations for an IT company and so a lot of people think that I was some computer savant, but I wasn't. I, we had a team for that. I ran the business end of a uh, $8 million startup. Wow, that's a huge responsibility, isn't it? $8 million? Yeah, yeah eight, $8 million. But uh, well, I was with the company. We grew from, it was about, they had about 800000 in sales when I first joined. And then we grew to $8 million, So I was part of that whole it was kind of exciting, you know, part of that whole tech uh, um, startup thing. And, uh, and it was, a, it was so much fun being able to be very professional, but going to work in jeans, and I brought my dog to work, I had actually I had, most of the time I had two dogs under my <laughs> under my desk. And uh, I, I loved my work. I loved what I did. It was very challenging. I managed by coastal offices in New York and San, and San Jose. Um, and then I, <laughs> I got this yen to uh, to walk the Camino de Santiago, and uh, the spiritual pilgrimage across Spain, and I couldn't get it out of my head. And I negotiated with them and negotiated with them, and uh, the most they would give me was three weeks of vacation, and you need five to really walk the Camino de Santiago. So I quit. And uh, uh, and stepped out into the unknown. This was 2006 when I quit. And so May of 2006, I went and I walked the community de Santiago. And uh, <laughs> I got to the highest point, O Sobrero. And I'm humping it up the hill with my oversized, overweight backpack. And there's a guy that comes up the other side on a motorcycle and turns in pup, 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 and I'm like I'm completely out of breath <laughs> and uh and long story short he uh, he was a motorcycle journalist and because I had just quit my job I was like wow that's really interesting <laughs> and uh so that was the the pivot literally the pivot point for my reinvention and really focusing on my motorcycling as my career from then wow I mean that's that's quite a brave move isn't it to just go right I quit I needed five weeks, so I'm just going to quit. It was terrifying. I found, I found yeah, a job that presumably paid you a really good income. Um, it was a it was a nice income. Uh, the the fallout from that was that I had the big fat mortgage, but I didn't have the big fat paycheck anymore. <laughs> so um, it was it was it, it was quite an adjustment. And I uh, it, it just it, walking the Camino in 2006 was really just the start of um, my whole wanderlust. I mean, I had done a little bit of travel, but at that point in time, I sort of shucked it all off. I reinvented myself as a motorcycle traveler because I had, the backstory behind all of that is for a decade, I had sat back and thought, gosh, you know, I, I would love to take a month off of work to go and ride my motorcycle around the United States. 
And in fact, at that pivotal moment in Spain at Osobrero, that's how I introduced myself to the German moto journalist. I said, yeah, I just have to tell you a really crazy story. I, I, I've always wanted to take a month off of work and ride my motorcycle, but here I am. I'm like walking. I, I quit my job to walk across Spain. What is that? And then, and then, of course, it was just, you know, the next evolution. Having met him gave me the inspiration to take the next steps. And because uh, I, I didn't know there was even a career uh, called being a moto journalist. And uh, so, so it's, I guess the, the, the takeaway from all of that is that when you step into the abyss, you don't know what's going to, you don't, you have no idea what's going to, what's going to come up, but you, something always does. And that's something I've been, I've uh, been practicing over my, my, my life. I mean, I've, I've reinvented myself several times. <laughs> like Madonna. <laughs> you not know, like Madonna. not, uh, yeah, she not, not as publicly as her by any means, but she's, she's an amazing example. You're right. She is. She is. So how did that experience meeting the motor journalist and experiencing the Camino walk and then, and then actually getting on your motorcycle and doing what you wanted to do, how did that affect the view you had of yourself, Elisa? Well, I I realized that I was much more capable than I thought. And I realized that a lot of the stories I told myself were things, uh, ideas that I had adopted from other people. My ex-husband always told me I was bad at directions. <laughs> bad. <laughs> and so I just believed it. But on the Camino, you walk, you walk along. It's such a, it's such a, leap of faith and so I learned to trust myself more and uh and and I had plenty of time five weeks of my only job was walking and carrying that <laughs> that heavy backpack you know it, it gave me a lot of time to reflect on so many of the things that I had previously thought about myself and uh and I use motorcycling I've continued to use motorcycling as that sort of um that test, that push. And I know we all have those ways that we like to push ourselves. Some people it's in the gym. Some people like to explore. For me, it's pushing myself into situations that challenge me. Uh, you know, taking off on my motorbike for six weeks, riding through Eastern Europe on my own. Um, I went on 2009 to 2010, I rode my motorcycle from my home in Connecticut to uh, USA to Argentina alone. And, uh, and that was again, another transformational trip, but each thing had its, had its step. And it wasn't like I just, uh, yes, I took that initial leap of faith, but that was because, I don't know, I guess it was my soul telling me what to do because I had never felt so drawn, so inspired to do something. Like I felt like my life depended on walking on the Camino. And that's the only thing. If, if I hadn't felt that inside, I, I doubt I would have stepped off into the abyss and quit my job and left my home and, <clears throat> and all that stuff. I, I, uh, but I felt it so strongly. So I'm very grateful to be connected to my, my intuition in such a strong way. And, and since then, I've been learning to foster it as well. Yeah. And, and have you ever stayed in contact with the man that you met on the motorbike? Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, he invited me back to Europe a couple different times to be his riding model. And it's not because I'm a model, but it's awfully difficult to, to be a moto journalist and be able to, and, and to take to ride and take the pictures. So the, the glamour of being his riding model <laughs> was that I would get to ride in front of a windmill. I remember one time I, I rode in front of a windmill like 40 times while he was trying to get the lighting right and the correct shot. And I had to go the right speed. And, <laughs> and wow. he was making fun of me because I couldn't do really tight U-turns and, 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 and do it faster. Like I, I you know. <laughs> How funny. So do yeah. you have a number of bikes or is there one bike that you absolutely love? Well, I love the one I'm riding. Which is? <laughs> Just whatever one I'm riding <laughs> right now. I have a, uh, a Indian Roadmaster. I also own a BMW uh, F800 GS. 
adventure and that's a in, like an enduro style bike i really really like riding off road and my path for the last 15 years has been <clears throat> riding more and more in the backcountry and going off going off the pavement it's really spectacular what you can see because when you uh, I remember I was at a uh, national park, I think it was Arches National Park, and I went, you know, went beyond the parking lot where most of the cars and the RVs up, and I went beyond the, uh, where the, where the trucks went, and then finally I was like, I was out there alone, I, had, I was in the middle of this national park all by myself, and, uh, and that's when the real magic happens, when it's quiet and there's not all the, the, the tourists, and you have the, those spectacular views, so I, I, I really do like going off-road. Days. Wow. So I know that you work with women. What kinds of women mm -hmm. do you work with and what sort of solutions are they looking for? I work with adventurous women who want to break outside of the confines of what they previously thought about themselves. Uh, women who are kind of, I guess, on a parallel journey that, I, that, that I've been on. And I help them see what's possible. I help them with confidence. My first book was Boost Your Confidence Through Motorcycling, A Woman's Guide to Being Your Best Self on and off the bike. And I really believe in adventure. And my, my, my thing is motorcycles, but for anyone, you know, stepping off into adventure, following your heart is a marvelous, marvelous way to uh, not only challenge yourself, but get inspired and get that inspiration to, to, to change your life. Um, and like I said, my thing is motorcycles. My second book that I just published, I, I haven't even had a chance to tell you yet. I published Get Started Riding Motorcycles, The Definitive Guide for Women. And uh, yeah, I, I find that a lot of women come to motorcycling through, um, they, they've gone through some life event. It could be a divorce. It could be um, maybe a parent dying, or it could be their kids going off to college. And, and particularly women come into motorcycling looking for that thing, that, that next thing for themselves to, to challenge themselves, but also to be a part of the community. And with everything that's gone on in the past year, two years now, motorcycling is a fantastic form of social distancing because you've got your helmet, you've got, you've got all your gear, but you can still be in community, you can be outdoors with people. So it's been transformational for not just for myself, but for so, so many women. Fantastic. So congratulations, firstly, on your second book. That's amazing. Yeah. Going, going <laughs> back you. to your first book, Boost Your yeah. Confidence Through Motorcycling. Did you write that because it was a time in your life where you didn't feel confident? You know, how did that come about? Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> many, many years ago, I was a shy housewife. I was in the middle of a divorce and I had a dream about motorcycling and I a motorcycle actually saved my life in the dream and I decided to go get my motorcycle license and that turned out very prophetic because motorcycling was gave me a community it gave me a place to belong and it gave me a place to grow into myself and so um that's my journey from shy housewife to confident you know world traveler on two wheels so it was really a lot of the lessons that I learned the way, but also it's it, it's particular, it's about motorcycling, but it's not just about motorcycling. It's There's a lot of tools in there that can can help folks who who are struggling with confidence or looking for a way to, to boost their confidence, yeah. Great, so if there's someone watching, Elisa, who, you know, right now is, is, is really suffering from low confidence, what, would you recommend? Well, I, I, I think that a journey with um, assistance, with support is always so much richer and so much faster. I would definitely recommend if you have the resources to get a coach, um, definitely take a look at where you're not confident, because I think that we all have silos of confidence. I think, you know, we can be very confident in our career, but maybe less confident with say boundaries or in relationships or whatever. Take a look at those areas and then either hire a coach or look for resources. We live in a world with so many online resources, books, find somebody to work with. Step, in, of course, I always recommend stepping into a adventure sport or 
some type of activity that is stretching for, for you and, uh, and, and find a community, find a, com a supportive community where, especially that particular person where you can connect one-on-one, -on -one, whether that's a coach or a therapist or, 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 or a dear friend. Great advice. Obviously, I'll put all your links below this interview. Oh. So please, please check Elisa's links out. This is probably a difficult question for you to answer, but of all the sure. things you've done in your life, what has given you the most joy? The most joy was I went and I worked in Namibia for two years. I worked on a leopard conservation project. We were trapping and collaring leopards and <laughs> I was lucky enough to be given a, um, this is a long story, so I'm, I'm keeping it really brief, but they, they gave me a truck and I got to ride around the bush all by myself, like uh, Elisa from America. I had a truck and I got to ride around the bush looking for leopards and tracking things. And it was the most amazing two years of my life. If I could, if I could do nothing else and just study animals, sit and, sit and watch them, that's what I would do. It gives me so much joy. Wow. Amazing. One final question. Yes. When you are no longer on this planet, how would you like to be remembered? Mm. I'd like to be remembered as the girl that went for it. She just said yes. I, you know, she just said yes to everything. Love it. It's been so <laughs> great talking to you. All that I need to say is, Elisa Clickinger, thank you ever so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to connect with you.